All right, uh, I'd like to welcome everybody to uh, David 22nd school board meeting. Uh, please rise and join us. Bader for present. Newby, present. Holstein, present. Yaris, present. Rabbit, present. Kucher, excuse. Well, I'd like to. I know the weather is getting warm, but I don't want to change it today. Maybe it's going to change like it did that last time. It changed. It changed all right with you. <laughs> maybe. Maybe we can hope. They look good coming in. The field looks good out there. The sports are outside, so. Uh, any additions, deletions, or changes to the agenda? Yes, I'd like to add item B to the non consent agenda the lockout codes and managing system or mapping system. Need. Any, anything else? I don't make a motion to approve the agenda with the add on. Motion to support. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, any comments or uh, community comments on the agenda? And I don't know. Okay. Okay. Seeing none. Part and spotlight. This month, this month, Spark Spotlight work with two amazing people, Chris Brissett and Corrine Barringer. Chris and Corrine are in charge of the Lindwood bus route. As the bus driver, Chris is tasked with the responsibility of transporting our students to and from school while navigating the busy streets, inclement weather conditions, and the occasional deer darting from the field. This responsibility can be stressful, but Chris handles it all with ease and a smile on her face. Corrine is tasked with the responsibility of ensuring that order is maintained on the bus and the students are safe, redirecting student behavior when necessary to ensure Chris can have her full attention on the road and surrounding area. And she does this in a way that's full of love and compassion. Our Linwood students have a lot of things to say about these two. A few quotes that I took away. Uh, one student said, Ms. Corrine listens to me when I don't have anyone to talk to, and she's always there for me. Another student said, Miss Chris is a good driver. She drives just right and gets us to school on time. Mm -hmm. And another student added, we love Miss Corrine and Miss Chris, our April Spartan Salt Lake recipients. And they told me they wouldn't be here tonight. Um, they have to get up at four in the morning to start their day. And I said that was all right. And I still talk about them and give them their awards tomorrow. All right. Okay, now on to the IFC 24-25 budget presentation and it's former superintendent and current IFC superintendent doing it. Thank you, Dr. Newby. I appreciate it. Um, Julie Muth, who's our business finance director, would be with me tonight. We put together our budget, but she is uh, doing a presentation at Bangor tonight, so we kind of split up. We have to get these approved before June, um, so we kind of split up and I told her to take Nick County to get back home here and I've uh, been hearing a lot of positive things and uh, working with Mr. Kowalczak and our directors I just want to it's good to see the enclosure going up on the soccer field that's that's a positive um, I talked to Michelle Goley our instructional services director and been working with Dr. Braun on some of your instructional uh, school improvement it's going very well and I know uh, Suzanne Masters who's our special ed director has worked with a team of uh, special ed educators here at Pinconi, and you're doing some data, digging into the data. Mr. Kowalczyk, that process is going pretty well, yeah, yes. I've been told. Mm -hmm. So tonight I'm going to go over some of the things in your, uh, the first thing I'd like to go over in your packet is uh, 
the white sheet that talks about the services that we provide at the Pink County. And uh, I'll just go over a few of those numbers. Uh, GFRP students in Pink County is 48. We currently have 93 students enrolled at the Career Center. Uh, special ed personnel, uh, you can see the number, the breakdown there with the psychologists, the pathologists, the OTs, um, number of Pink County residents in our center based program and uh, is 45. Uh, number of students transported for special ed programs is 27. Imagination Library, 25, uh, servicing over 2,500 2, students in Bay County. And then Math in the Mail, we service about 154 throughout Bay County. So those are just a snapshot of the things that we're providing uh, Pink County. Very similar to years past. Um, next thing I want to kind of highlight is this next sheet that kind of goes over our services, a sampling of what we provide. And um, I just kind of explain it. The career technical education, as you know, the Career Center. We're going to get um, Mr. Kowalczyk, I believe, got a list of some winners recently. Did you get those at the um, uh, soups meeting? I think the email came in okay. after it with our with the clubs, right? Yeah, yeah. The, the winners. So you're going to be, uh, we're doing very well. And uh, the, the student clubs at the ISD with Pink County students have done very well. We have some state winners that are going on to the nationals. <laughs> So that's very exciting, and I'd like to make sure Mr. Kowalczyk gets that list, and uh, Mr. Barnt will get that as well so we can get those students in the, in the journal. Um, special Ed services, like I mentioned before, Special Ed is our largest department. Uh, some people think of the ISD as the Career Center, and that's really one of our smaller components. Uh, our Special Ed programs are probably our largest, and they, they encompass everywhere from 0 to uh, 26. Uh, we have student, we have home visitors for the zero to three population for the special needs. So realistically, the ISD's biggest uh, footprint is in special education. Imagination Library, I've talked about this in the past. If it's the Dolly Parton, it's the students getting books zero to five. And just realize that that is not funded by Dolly Parton. It is really comes out of, uh, we have to fundraise for that. And uh, so the one thing what I can ask you if you're going to talk to your legislators, uh, it was written into the budget, into the state budget last year. The ISD got a certain amount of money for the Imagination Library, and it, it really helps sustain that. It's about $75,000 a year that we pay to, to keep that program afloat. And um, think kind of, last year, I think we asked for a little bit of a subsidy, and I know the locals had kicked in a little bit because the pot had gotten smaller. So just know that that program, we're really trying to keep it going. Um, <clears throat> continue to provide guidance around a countywide school safety initiative. We have an assailant task force that um, that we that's for all Bay County schools, and that right now is very active, as you should you can imagine. Uh, technology services and support. It's good that Jay works very well with our um, with our technology department. We're working on a fiber project that's going to go under the river in Bay City and it's going to it's going to be a project that's going to help where we don't have uh, outages that impact if one school goes down everyone on the chain after them goes down this would be redundant Jay well, yes see I'm learning it would be redundant so you wouldn't have to go down so that is really something we're pushing um, literacy rounds so again our instructional services provide a lot of work and literacy and as you flip to the other side, these are some of the newer things that we've, that we've pr provided recently. Uh, grant opportunities like 31N mental health counselors have been a really big, uh, I, throughout the ISD, but I know we're talking to Mr. Kowalczyk, uh, very, very well received here. Our students and our staff have really embraced the, the mental health component. Talent Together, I jumped down a little bit. Talent Together is, is a teacher apprenticeship program that is addressing the teacher shortage. And we're, as an ISD, we're, uh, we're working with local districts. Pink County, I think, has three or four. We have three and one who's interested right now. So basically, that's a, that's a program that's set up, and I don't know if you've talked to the board about it or not. It's, it's a, they have funding that basically pays for a, to become a teacher, and it also pays them to be... Um, if they're uh, in their student teaching, they're going to be a it'll be a paid internship, which is nice. So you're going to get paid 80% of step one of a teacher salary. So 
it's really been attractive. We, we know we need teachers. That's definitely a, uh, something that we're, we're pushing. Career navigators have been very active getting EDPs for the students in Payne County and throughout Bay County. Zello is a program they've been utilizing as well. One thing you probably don't think about when you think about the ISD is we have a very robust adult ed program. Uh, last year, our, we graduated about 100 students that either had their GED or their high school completion. So it's a very robust adult ed program that really I don't think a lot of people know about it a whole lot. And then last, I'll just skip down through. I uh, just want to thank Pink County for being part of our strategic plan. Last spring we did uh, we did some focus groups this fall. We did some uh, surveys of staff and Pink County gave us a lot of input on building our strategic plan. So we have, we our board's adopted I believe 12 goals, and we are working toward those. We're working on action plans uh, starting in the fall to kind of implement the strategic plan. So, thank you for your input uh, in that process. Any questions about what we provide? All right, we'll go through the budget. There's a lot of numbers here. And if you have questions, just stop me. And then, if, um, if I can't answer it, Julie, I'll make sure Julie. Muzz, our CFO, can get back with you. So the, uh, the process of um, us coming here, basically it's required by PA 234. Prior to May 1st, ISD, um, we have to propose a budget. And then prior to June 1st, the constituent districts must review and then either support or have disapproval of the general fund. We're going to talk about all three funds, but realistically the law only says we have to talk about the general fund. But uh, we've always gone and done all three of our, because we have three budgets, and they're, they're all pretty large, so it's good that we, we kind of give you an update on all of those. Okay. Thank you. So we have our general, our general fund, our special ed fund, our vocational education fund, student activity, our debt services, and our capital projects. Those are some things we're going to talk about tonight for the most part. We're going to talk about the general, the three different funds, and then some of our uh, our debts that we currently have. When we build our budget, we have to have assumptions, and then because right now, I'll be honest with you, the state has very little to go on as far as the budget. Uh, the governor had released her budget, and then the Senate released theirs late last week. But we have to develop this like a month ago. So we're going to kind of look at some of these assumptions that we're going to have property tax increase of 5%. In, interest income is going to decrease by 20%. Uh, Section 81, uh, those state funds are up 2.5. Insurance hard cap was very small this year, 0.2%. Our ancillaries, we're going to, we uh, assume they're going to increase 4%. Uh, 1% in our retirement, our property casualty, and then wages and benefit increase. I will tell you, you might be getting a surprise this year from, from your insurance carriers that say, because of the valuations now of all the uh, different properties that they base your insurance on to insure your buildings. We, uh, I didn't get the exact number, but as you can assume, the buildings are becoming more expensive as they get assessed. So your tech, what it's gonna cover, what you pay to cover them is gonna go up as well. So just heads up, Andy. <laughs> All right, it's kind of hard to see. Chris has got the best view in the house right there, up close. But um, basically, if you we want to kind of look at the general the general fund, this uh, funds things like our instructional services, our early childhood programs, mental health, and our GSRP. You're going to see that um, the fund balance toward the end has gone up a little bit. But again, those are, uh, we have some one-time dollars that are built into this budget. So we're going to see that, that that number will be coming down. We have, um, in this pot of money, and people sometimes when they look at fund balances, a lot of these positions in this, um, in this budget are, are things like 31N counselors and instructional coaches. And we really want to sustain those. So let's say the state were to pull the money out uh, next year and say we're not going to fund 31N. We built in a succession where we'll be able to keep those, those positions intact for a, 
uh, our board, as Mr. Baderford is part of the board, they want to make sure that we can continue those at least in the in the short term, so that we 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 don't we we start to depend on a, a 31 M counselor, and the state says they don't we won't fund them anymore. Now all of a sudden our students are they don't have someone there to, to work with them. So that that's kind of a safety net as well. Our special ed fund is our largest pot of money. Um, you see there's $32 million in revenue, and you'll notice that local and state sources. We have, um, we did again have some one-time dollars involved in this. The state reimbursed ISDs for, um, for some retirement that we didn't, uh, didn't get in the past, so that was kind of built into this budget. Um, this is that 22%, and this builds in a distribution to all of our locals. So in the past uh, several years, we've included a payout of distribution to Maytown and all the different, um, because that fund, once it gets over 20%, we distribute part of that back. So it's a healthy fund right now. Um, I'm trying to kind of you see Another thing we, we what you don't see in here is that we're doing some, we're in contract negotiations and, and you know that for all of these pots, all these funds we have, we haven't had any contracts open that, that would be reflective of some of the increases we've seen around us. So you're looking at three, four, five percent increases on a lot of the, uh, the contracts that are open. We've only we're coming out a lot of contracts that are at one percent or some of the more real, realistic numbers that you would have seen two or three years ago. So our funds are all going to be impacted by a new bargaining environment, I, I should say. And I know that Bay City, Midland, and um, Saginaw ISD, we compete for talent with those with those uh, those districts, and they their pay scales have gone up quite a bit. So, any questions about special ed? Next one is our Career Center Fund. Um, this, this, this has gone up a little bit. And again, we had some, we had some ability to leverage some retirement dollars that we're going to potentially, I'll talk about it in a little bit, that we have some, the, the Career Center Fund, the Career Center Fund and the ISD have, we built a, a health care wing several years back. And there's still payments on that. Every year we pay $250,000 to pay the bonds that finance our health care. We're talking, we talk a little bit at our board retreat about taking some of this surplus and paying off that, those bonds. So if we did that, that fund balance would go down to about 22 or 23 percent. And just so I, I kind of should have led with this, but I think the board knows that we we can't levy millages. Basically, we can sell bonds, but we can't have a millage. So a lot of the ISD has to pay for improvements through fund balance. That's why it's a little heavier than you would see in a local. But we can't go to the voters and say we need a new building. We have to finance it with our own capital. So career center fund again. If this is actually one of our this will be without those those one time dollars. The Career Center Fund is probably our tightest fund, and our board talked a little bit about recently about potentially a Headley, because uh, we can't levy all of our millage from the Career Center, and there's a Headley rollback, because um, you can only capture mill at a certain amount. If it exceeds the Headley, then they, they don't let you capture all those mills. So we'd have to go to the voters to get a Headley override for like whatever we aren't capturing. It's about $400,000 a year that we can't capture. So, and it wouldn't be an increase to the taxpayers, it would just be the same mill, but we'd be able to levy that whole amount. Any questions about the Career Center? Okay, Student Activity Fund. This is the fund that finances all of our student clubs, and our student clubs, all of our students <laughs> that compete, it costs money to go to state, uh, re local, state, regional, national, and we fund all of that. So you know what travel is like nowadays. So if you take 30 students and bring them up to Traverse City or what it might not, what it might be, 
This is done in a lot of that revenue from local uh, sources that is fundraising dollars. So those that 248 would be fundraising mm -hmm. dollars, maybe uh, dollars from the Blooming Chefs restaurant, those types of things. And then we actually take $160,000 from our general fund and put it into the student activity fund to make sure that it's solvent. And that number has gone up quite a bit over the years. It's, um, that's a good thing because that means more kids are, are getting awards and a lot of students are going and traveling, but it is becoming a little bit more of a, 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 a bigger expense than what we had planned in the past. Mm -hmm. Any questions on the student fund? Basically, that's finances. Here's our debt. This is our debt service. I just talked about there's about 986,000 outstanding, but again, that that 2024 would be uh, that 244,000 would come off of there because that would be paid. But that those last three years of the 750,000 would be something we may, if we can, if we can do this, we'd have to work with um, with our uh, attorney. But it's it's kind of like called a bond escrow, I believe, where you, we would put money into an escrow. Put it all in there and then every year because you can't pay your bonds down sooner because the bond holders need to get their money so it would basically be put the money into an escrow and then every year it would come out of that amount and it wouldn't have to hit our budget every year okay building operations here's some things that we're working on just so you know that some of those dollars and those um, fund balances are what they're going toward bsc is our educational service center basically where all the pds um, takes place. We've got some things, uh, maintenance vehicles, just like you would here in Pink Pine. We have the same, we've got a lot of grass. I mean, it's it's very expansive from the career center and all around our building. And then, uh, so we do it in a, we have a complex over in Essexville. We're doing some awning work, resurfacing parking lots, and we know how expensive that can be. Uh, can go forward, please. Our career center, here's some things we're working on at the career center. We're doing some plumbing upgrades. We're gonna move our culinary uh, classroom to a different location. Not, not, this is just the classroom, not the actual kitchen. So they do instruct in a classroom. Boiler house, got uh, some work to do there. We're putting in a safety wall by the restaurant. Just as you come in to go to the Blooming Chefs, there's really, there's nothing, there's nothing to stop a customer from walking straight into the, to the career center. So that, I mean, there's, there's people there, but it's it just, we've, we've come to the conclusion we want to build a, a wall that stops people from actually entering the career center. Doing a lot of carpet replacement. We have roofs just like you do here. And then some other things with our small engine, alignment of the pit, the small engine, uh, classroom, okay. LLC Bay Campus. Again, a lot of people don't realize we have a, a large, very large building over in Essexville. There's, these are some things we're going to be working on over there. And that is, that is it. Any questions? If you don't have any questions, I uh, thank you for your attention. Um, it is a pleasure to work with Ken Connolly, as you know. I, um, I still get back. We have classrooms within within the district. I try to get this as often as I can. And um, if anybody wants to come down to the career center and maybe take a tour as a board, if you want to set something up, just get a hold of me. If you haven't been there in a long time, it might be worth. Because I know the path they've done. Sometimes they've invited boards from across the ISC. But if you don't want to wait for that, you want to just kind of see what's going on. We can get, take you through there and do a quick tour. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Yeah, the consent agenda. Mr. President, I have a motion to approve the consent agenda and pay bills totaling one million ninety two thousand nine hundred and three dollars and forty nine cents. Motion to support. Any discussion? Roll call. Bader. Yes. Anderson. Yes. Holstein. Yes. Yaris. Yes. <coughs> Ravish, yes. Duby? Yes. Six zero. Approved. Uh, communication. Paul J. Thank, Thank you, you, President Duby. Uh, first, I want to talk about the Sage Lift. 
Um, I know that was brought up a couple meetings ago that we need something uh, for our community students, whoever it may be in wheelchairs, to get onto our stage. Uh, I did originally look with uh, a local builder at what we could do, looking at knocking out walls. It was going to be a pretty big project, which we thought it was going to be. When I called the company that has one company that has the list, they said that it sounds like this is a perfect uh, situation for our our mobile stage lift that you can bring in and out. So I do have in your packet the three different quotes, um, and I would I would like to go with the Ameriglide lift system for nine thousand nine hundred two dollars eighty cents. Um, the one thing though is that I am still waiting on our lawyer to make sure that all ADA compliances are confirmed. I would not want to purchase this without getting the approval. Uh, the company said, "Yeah, we're okay," but I just want to make sure because that's I want us to be on the right side of everything uh, as far as the compliance goes. So, um, so that is something that I would like. To, and you can see that there are two other quotes. Um, that are a little bit cheaper, but the motor is twice as strong as a half horse motor on the other two compared to the one horse motor. And the amount of lift um, was 550 on the two lower ones, 750 on this one. So it would be, I'm sure the stronger motor would definitely be helpful in getting the things up and down that need to. So, so with the play coming up, do you need this? No. No, you do not. Um, all right, um, next we have, oh, and it really doesn't need approval because it's under the, the um, it was just me showing you, like I said before, I would always show you that we did look at those other options, um, and would let you know when those purchases would be made. Soccer field update. Uh, we did, it looks good from the road, looks good from the parking lot. You can see that the, uh, um, we're getting ready to pour one of the, uh, dugouts and those will both be done soon. Um, we had the girls team go out and practice a week or two ago, and it's still too rough, too many patches um, where the, the grass hasn't grown in because of such a high clay content. Um, so it's not ready yet. I'm still hoping that if we keep seeding and putting some dirt fertilizer in those fair spots that maybe, you know, before the end of the season, which, you know, we're looking at a month away almost from that. So. We'll see, but we're not going to put anybody in danger, especially, you know, the other teams coming in. Uh, we're going to make sure it's ready. It looks good, but we, we do want to make sure that all those bare spots have grass and that it's safe for everybody. Um, I don't know. I mean, there's probably maybe 50 spots that have bare spots, but one bad spot, you know, where someone can roll an ankle. We don't want that. So uh, working with True Green, they are promising me we're just going to keep working on it, keep fertilizing it, and getting rid of the bad grasses that are kind of clumpy and grow up. We can, that's why there are some bad spots, because we got rid of those in the fall. Um, but they prom they said we're, it's going to get there. We just not as fast as we want. <laughs> we wish it was perfect right now. Um, grass cutting at Linwood. Uh, the, the Linwood, Linwood Civic Improvement uh, has taken over for the Linwood Park Board, uh, and we worked on the insurance, <laughs> dropped some of the insurance costs for them because they are not a fundraising group. Um, then we did create the new contract with them and change some things. They are requesting or want to know if we can help with cutting the grass because right now they are paying for the grass to be cut. Um, what I would like to do is maybe have our crew go out there in the close near future and have them cut it to see how long it would actually take us. You know, I mean, this is something that's going to take us half a day with the person. That's a pretty big ask. Um, but with our bigger mowers, you know, if it's a couple of hours, we may be able to help where we do the cutting and they still do the weed whacking. I want to at least look into it. Uh, to see if that's where we're at and wanted to bring it up to you for any discussion or thoughts on, you know, what we can do. And I did ask them. I met with one of the board members today, and my question, you know, was, okay, so what is your role? What are you doing at the park, you know, if we're going to be paying insurance? And, pay? and they said, we want to continue to have some money for improvements. When some bleachers go bad or the building needs something, 
whatever, whatever it is, tennis, tennis courts, courts we finished. They, they would, would like, like to keep, keep that up, up. Um, keep the parking lot looking, looking nice. nice. They're looking at putting lights, lights in the parking lot. lot. So, so that's, that's it's, it's good. good. You know, they are doing some good things, and if we can help, that's great. Um, we'll see. I want to check with our guys and check with some other companies to see what you know that cost would be for us. Maintenance delivery, delivery driver, driver, I think this is something, something that we will probably need to have a, um, a committee meeting, a personnel committee meeting. We have, we've we struggled to keep a, a maintenance driver throughout the year. We had a couple months where we didn't have one at the beginning of the year. Right now it's a four hour a day job. And I think it may be helpful if we can bump that up a couple hours uh, to get someone that might be more steady, but also can help our maintenance crew uh, do some of the things because they, have a, a tough, tough time keeping up with, with grass cutting. I mean, we're going to have now a whole new soccer field that, that, that all needs to be cut. cut. Um, doing a lot of things. So I will give the personnel, personnel committee. Um, there's, there's a couple other things I want to talk about as well. But to see, it, maybe that, that would help, help because four hours, hours a day, I think that's, that's a tough job, job to keep someone at, you know, with only 20 hours a week. Um, EMS, EMS support, support uh, from, from the, the, the Northern, Northern Bay Ambulance. Ambulance. I, I talked, talked to a board member from the Northern Bay Ambulance, Ambulance um, <laughs> last week in the beginning today. today. What, what he would like, like, what he proposed, is that we have an agreement, agreement with Northern Bay Ambulance, Ambulance to use them when we have emergencies here in our facilities uh, in, in Pink County. Um, um, he, he did make it clear to me, he explained that the city no longer has that agreement with the Northern Bay Ambulance. They, they would, would go, go with Patriot, Patriot which, which is near Buck Um so, so if we have, have the agreement with Northern, Northern Bay, um, it, it costs, costs nothing to us. us. The school would have, have no cost to it. it. The, the parents would have the cost just, just as they would have with Patriot, Patriot when they come. come. The, the benefit, benefit is there are, I think, four townships, Mount Forest, Garfield, King County, and Gibson. They all already pay for Northern Bay Ambulance. So, so any student, student that would have an emergency, emergency here, their, their parents, parents, home, home residents, if in one of those townships, they get a <laughs> discounted rate because they're already paying taxes for it. So, so it seems like it's you know kind of a no-brainer to do that, that um, to have the that available for the parents. Um, and, and what that, that would need from me is just a letter stating that I would like that to be an agreement. And they said we'll still come to your football games and park there, you know. And, just, just like, like before, if there's a, an uh, emergency, then they take off. But otherwise, they're here for us in those situations. So wanted to bring it up and see if there were any concerns or questions with getting into that agreement, which again would cost nothing to us. To take official action? On no. Okay. No. No. Legally, can we do that? If the city is contracted with the other one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, the, they said that they will, and I'll check just to make sure. But I was told that yes, we can because I said what I do not want is to have problems with the city and they said no it's it's nothing they're okay but good question i'm gonna just check to make sure good okay um finally the room and exterior door numbers we have it in your packet um the quote from the lockout company for forty nine thousand two hundred and eighty six dollars i met with them probably over a month ago and they have all the different things i think i talked about it where they have the lights that change colors if there's an emergency they have all sorts of things but what i really wanted was to get it down to having the interior signs most buildings you go into they have kind of like the triangle cones that stick out so if there's an emergency and you're walking down the hall you can see the numbers that are not flat on the doors so emergency crews can see the numbers and they're color coded and then also the reflective numbers around the building uh, Currently, we have major doors that have the numbers, and I would like uh, all doors numbered. And I checked with the um, the sheriff in Bay County and asked them what they suggest, and they said that's what all schools are doing. They are numbering all doors because if there's you know ten and then three doors next to it have no number on it, you're not sure which one it is. You number all the doors. There's no questions. So this money. Um, Originally, I tried checking on companies to get the, the quotes to look, couldn't find any. I did call the ISD, and they said that all of our uh, ISD schools that are doing it are going through the, the lockout company. Uh, and this would be funded um, from our student safety grants. And there may be a little extra that we have to put in depending on 
how much our school resource officer, because we will get some money back at the end of the year for that as well. So there could be a small amount, but most of it will be through that student safety grant will be used. So, and that's in your non-consent, so we can discuss that more if needed. Um, but that is something that I think will be great upgrade for our building. We, do we then have a diagram of schools say? So we have two different things going on. Yeah, we, we did have a grant for the mapping, and they have it. I've seen the renderings of it. They're just waiting for the door numbering so they can finish it. Because I told them, don't do a map if we have our numbers, you know, that we want to make sure it's done right. So those are ready to go. We've already paid for the maps. Okay. Uh, and those will go to all of the emergency services so they can see where electric shutoff is, water, power, they have everything. It's a really clear, nice map of the facilities. Any questions? Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, too. you want to just. Just say thank you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I can say it. Got it. It wasn't in my thing. Yeah, we do have a resignation uh, for Lou Andro, who's been with us for many, many years. She's kind of the base of Linwood. Um, 30. Yeah. And that's, you know, it's tough to lose somebody and, and replace someone with that much knowledge uh, and experience. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So that's, it's uh, great to have had her for this long and we appreciate all she's done and, and we know she's gonna enjoy her time camping and doing fun stuff after her Linwood elementary life. So thank you for doing it, girl. That's it. Okay, do we have a chance to talk to Wayne a little bit? She said the last administrator she has is her favorite. <laughs> 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 became the national powerlifting champion in the 44 kilo division. Jasmine's totals were 85 kilograms in squat, 40 kilograms in bench, and 112 kilograms in deadlift for a grand total of 237.5 kilograms. Esports. The Super Smash Brothers team consisting of Norman Olar, Colin Hertzberg, and Alex Kafka finished the season on April 10th the team ended up with four wins and four losses on the season. The Spartan Steed Mario Kart team of Connor Whipcup, Colin Herzberg, Cooper Sherman, and Luke Collins fought their way to a six wins and two losses record and the number 10 ranking in the state. The team was defeated by Allen Park 2-1 to one in the first round of the playoffs. The Sport and Chariot Mario Kart team of Dylan Kremminghouse, Eli Goodman, Jacob Schoenbach, and Griffin Morin ended the regular season with a seven wins and one loss record, securing the number four ranking in the state. The team is still alive in the state tournament <laughs> after defeating Huron High School in the first round and Allen Park in round two of the playoffs. The team faced Manistee this afternoon at four with a chance to once again qualify for the state semifinals at Oakland University this weekend. Um, King County Mario Kart team member Griffin Morin was named one of the one of eight all state selections and then was named the Michigan Player of the Year for Mario Kart. Griffin will be honored at the state finals at Oakland University this weekend. Student Council. The members of Student Council are busy preparing for the Spring Awards Assembly, which will take place on Friday, May 3rd. The Assembly will feature the recognition of Spring Varsity athletes, graduating seniors, and other excellence from BHS students. The Student Council elections for the 2024-2025 school year will take place on Friday. Students who are not elected will then have the opportunity to interview for one of the many open positions. 
the Bay County Youth Leadership. Graduating ceremonies for the Bay County Youth Leadership occurred on March 27th. Tecani Jr. Summer Palmville and Cassidy White participated in the program this year. As a part of the program, these students learned leadership skills while facilitating programs to benefit the community. Middle School Student Council. The Middle School Student Council will be sponsoring a field day on Wednesday, May 15th. Spanish classes. A group of Spanish two students went at SPSU April 18th. They competed against other schools in various events for their foreign language. Lauren Summers placed second place in the song competition. Sophia Deal, Trevin Billingsley, Luke Paggins, Lauren Summers, Bailey Van Horn, and Claire Charbonneau placed second in, well, placed third in dance. Grace Helm placed third in the poster contest. Auden Winkest and Amber Myers placed third in displays. A team of Alan Whiting, Connor Wincup, and Allison Bork plays third in the inter International Awareness Contest. Band. The following students participated in the Middle School Salon Ensemble Festival on Saturday, April 20th at Dallas Area Schools. Marissa Wincup for an alto saxophone solo. Veteran Rivera also with an alto saxophone solo. Uh, Haley Gentle and Lily O'Dell for a percussion duet. Finally, prom. Prom 2024 will take place on Saturday, May 18th from 6 to 11 p.m. at the Great Hall in Middle. The dance scene is mas masquerading. Tickets are $50 per person. <laughs> Congrats. Yes. Administrators. Uh, sure. uh, we completed our first week of state testing last week with SAT, PSAT, um, and our work keys. And that this is the first year they were all digital and everything went fantastic. <laughs> I feel like I knock on wood every time. Um, we have M Step 8 was also last week, and then tomorrow kicks off our M Step 6 and 7. And then we'll just keep rolling, and then it brings us to our AP exam. So we are getting closer to the end of the year, but so far, so good. Um, our staff and our counselors have been amazing at getting everything going and, and organized. And take the village, so that's what we have. Sorry, I jumped in front of on Thursday, May 23rd, we're going to have our Memorial Day program at Linwood at 1.15. That's a month away. It's going to be here before we know it. And everyone's invited to attend. Um, and then just to uh, talk about water on our playground, thank you, Mr. Polchik, for looking into that. And I know we're still waiting to get some answers, but uh, we've had water on our playground since the morning. It's not going away. So we think there's a cracked tile somewhere. Not sure if that occurred when they're pouring the concrete for the new baseball or if it's something the farmer field. I'm a city girl still learning about farmer. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not quite sure, but there's water on the playground. Kids can't use it and uh, kind of a bummer that they can't use it right now. Um, and then just finally with Lou retiring after 30 years, I only had the pleasure of working with her for the past two years, but um, I know she's, she means a lot to Pinconi Area Schools, a lot to Linwood. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do next year without her. I don't know who's who. I know our families, of course, but, you know, random people that come to our building, she'll say, oh, that's Uncle so-and-so, or, you know, that's my cousin, you know, three times, whatever. So um, she's a big part of Linwood, and we're really going to miss her. But um, we're really happy for her to uh, to retire, and uh, hopefully she'll enjoy it. Just a quick update on the tile. We I contacted the tile company. They know the tile companies from the farmers field. We don't even know if that area is tiled. We we don't know. It may not be. It, there's no extension. There's no drainage anywhere. Um, and from what we heard, the farmer we asked someone. I, I think that was you that said they don't think. Lou Lou knows the farmer. Yeah. That field. So Friday she went down and spoke to him, and he said that he doesn't think. He doesn't think we drain into because that's what originally the tile people thought that it was draining into their tiles, which then went out somewhere. They said no. So, you know, it's 
may not be tiled, but when the tile guys went up, they said it looks like a broken tile because that water's been there for months. I don't think it's ever been Yeah, and I called Mr. Bader and he didn't think it was tiled. So. No, it hasn't been wet like this before. Did, did was it always damp? Not this much. Did Lou check with them in case we wanted to tap into theirs? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Maybe they can check into that tile repair. Yeah, let's see. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we usually have the typical, you know, water swings, right? Yeah. The kids crash. Yeah. 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 It's not. It's not that. It's flooded. It's, it's flooded. Yeah, so, so we're going to keep looking. We're yeah. continuing to talk. Yeah. So thank you. Kyle, mm -hmm. Sue? Good. Okay. All right. Uh, Non-consent agenda. Mr. President, make a motion to approve the Bay Area ISD budget for 2024 25. Support. Motion to support. Any discussion? Thank you for coming down. Thank you. 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 Switch to those of that lockout on a code mapping system. Motion to support. Yes. Any discussion? Roll call. ERS? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Betafer? Yes. Holstein? Yes. Rabbish? Yes. Gibby? Yes. Six zero. Oh, I didn't ask it. I assume that's a summer project. I would hope so. Yeah, I mean, we'll see how much business they have. Yeah, as soon as we can get it. Yeah, we'll be on a list. I'm sure of other schools as well. Okay. And that's for all buildings. Linwood right. Advancement Academy, Central High School, Middle School. Yeah. Uh, any public comments? Jason Brothers, I just wanted to say thanks to you guys for all your support. <laughs> I didn't think I was going to get a moment to go it, it was an awesome journey. Yes. We had a great time. She was actually here with me until we were here at 5.30 because we thought the meetings were at 5.30 and they got switched. So we had to take her back home. But I want to say thanks to you guys for all your support. Great. Uh, great to see. Uh, I think I see the, 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 the picture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's her medal. Nice. How much weight was it total? But I guess it's five hundred twenty-five pounds. What's that? That's almost five hundred twenty-five oh. pounds. Uh, I see Kenny's gone. Um, just to let you know, uh, Gina got here, pitched the first game, got her five hundredth strikeout. Thank God. This evening, in the, uh, an hour or two ago. And uh, your student representative, she's being a little shy. She's also your salutatorian. Hey. Any others? Anybody? Hey. Seeing none. Yeah. Go out of the discussion I have right in the board. Where are we at with the, the bids were in, they were accepted uh and opened uh a week ago Friday. Uh so now we're just waiting for um uh, Mr. Opan to go through them with us to select who that winning bid will be. Okay. And hopefully they get started soon and have it ready before fall. Did Jim go bid? No. No. And they're more of a supplier. They're not the bidder. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just thought that. <laughs> well, that concludes our business. Before we have a closed session. So we'll I, go to closed session. I, I thank you everybody for coming. Uh, motion. 
In support, go to closed session. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Oh. <laughs> 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 yeah.